Okay, so um, in my introductory uh, slide and video, I told you a bit about the traditional method. I don't think I need to delve too much into that. I think you get it, don't you? Um, a lecture theatre based, a classroom based type learning. It's what you've already been doing in your colleges, in your sixth forms, but perhaps in a bigger group. All right. And um, let's not delve into that too much. I think you get it. Um, let's talk about PBL. All right. Uh, let's talk about case based learning, integrated learning, because these things, as well as knowing about it, um, you need to know it because this is something that might come up in your MMI or uh, panel interviews. People might ask you about the teaching methods and you really you need to show good insight uh, into what PBL is. So what is PBL? Do you know what PBL is? Have you thought about it? Have you read about it? What do you think PBL is about? What does it stand for? You know, what does the acronym PBL mean? Well, as it says um, on the tin, the P stands for problem, B for based, L for learning, problem based learning. OK, so problem based learning was initially coined and implemented in North America, in the United States. It's a concept that came to the UK um, back in the um, 80s and 90s. It was refined enough to be implemented in universities like Liverpool and Manchester in the early 90s. And it's kind of grown since then. It's evolved since then. So essentially, right, what does PBL stand for and mean? What, what's it about? How does it work? So um, I presume you've probably done some reading on that. And for those of you who haven't, um, I'm going to kind of go through all the stages just so you know. All right. Um, so PBL is delivered in small groups. So at the beginning of the year, let's say there are 100 students in your year, you'll be divided up into typically 10 groups. Each group consists of about 10 members. All right. 10 fellow students. You'll be mixed in terms of like postgrads, undergrads, where you're from, etc., just to balance the group out, all right, so that there's people from different backgrounds, different thinking, age groups, and so forth, um, making up that group. And it helps in terms of making the group healthy um, and, and create good debate within the group. So you'll be, you, you know, you'll be assigned to a group at the beginning of the year. So as a group, what you'll do is you'll meet up, for example, in week one, um, and you as a group will discuss the case. All right. And what you'll have is a facilitator sat in with you who will just kind of watch and make sure you're not going off the cliff edge. You're not going off a tangent. Right. They'll just kind of help to kind of keep you in the right place. All right. And the right discussion. They won't be there to lecture you and teach you anything. They'll be there to guide you. OK, the guidance, the actual work has to come from you guys. All right. So. For example, you're doing a case and it's to do with um, a breathless person. So as a group, you might think, OK, well, this has got something to do with the lungs. We might have to learn about the lungs, the anatomy. How do lungs work? How does oxygen go in? How does carbon dioxide come out? What can go wrong with the lungs? So that case, the person might have, say, uh, they might get wheezy at night. They might wake up coughing. They might... Um, um, you, you know, they might be having it from being a child. And so you kind of um, work out that this is probably something to do with asthma. All right. Or a wheezing condition. So then, you know, besides reading up about your lungs and how they work and the anatomy and the physiology, you might then go away and read up about some pathophysiology, i.e. Um, what can go wrong with the lungs. So typical conditions like asthma might be the first thing you read. Somebody else might read about other conditions like COPD and cystic fibrosis and other conditions which aren't as common but may present with similar symptoms right so somebody might go and do some reading about that um, somebody might also say well actually how do we manage these conditions so they might go away and read about the clinical management of asthma they might read up about the guidance around asthma they might read up about um, evidence base around asthma management. You might then read about the epidemiology of asthma, i.e. how prevalent is it? How common is it? Is it more prevalent in certain societies than others or certain age group or certain genders or certain professions, right? So um, as a group, you decide what your learning objectives are. OK, we're going to learn about the anatomy of the lungs, right? Ted, go away and learn about that. Bring it back to us. Susan, you be the backup person. You learn about that as well. Okay. 
What we'll do is learn about the physiology of the lungs, i.e. the way inspiration works, the way expiration works, and um, we'll learn up about that. So physiology, right, Andrew and Simon, you go and wait and do a bit of physiology for us. Come back and teach the rest of us, all right? Um, what we'll do is Sally and Aisha, they're going to go off and read about pathophysiology, i.e. something about asthma, COPD and other conditions and bring it back to the table. Ben and David, they're going to go and learn about the pharmacol pharmacology of the lungs. So they might talk, come back and talk to you about inhalers. They might come back and talk to you about certain tablets, certain things about allergies and so forth. You know, you've got Fatima and Freya over there and they're going to go away and learn about something else. For example, how does smoking, lifestyle, etc., affect this person, right? So what you're doing is you're coming back with a lot of knowledge, which is holistic and looks at that person as a person. All right. Um, so as a group, you're doing the learning. You're, you're not getting anybody ramming it down your throat. Right. You will go away. You'll do the hard work. You'll do all of that and come back. Now, just because David and Andrew said were told to go and do um, topic A does not mean they just do that for the full week. The reality is you've got the list of A to F or whatever you've decided. These are the learning objectives. Now, what, what you tend to do as a person is you might give priority to a couple of objectives that you've been assigned to do, but you would also do reading around other aims and objectives as well so that you can contribute to the discussion the following week. All right. So the following week, what happens is you all come back. OK, the following week, you're all going to come back, sit in the room with your facilitator and you're going to bring that case to a close, that problem based learning episode to a close. But before you do that, what you'll do is you'll cover each section. Each person for a few minutes will talk about their area and the others can kind of feed into it. They might say, well, what about that? What about this? What about that? So together, what you're doing is learning and reinforcing that element of knowledge. And it, it needs everybody to pitch in and work together. And in the end, what you do is you deliver a number of learning objectives in the second session. It's really cool and interesting and gets everybody involved. And um, yeah, in the end, you know, you've covered um, lots of learning material, but you've been involved. You've directed the learning. Um, you've kind of orchestrated it. Um, the facilities may, facilitator has made sure you've not gone off the edge of a cliff or off a tangent. You know, instead of looking at the lungs, you've gone off looking at the heart, for example. They'll make sure you don't do that. OK, um, and that's essentially how PBL works. All right. It's quite neat if you think about it.